Question number one. Why did you choose this breed? How long have you had this breed? The breed fell on me. I had been raised with Roddies for years and wanted to get another. The breeder who I later found out was a puppy mill, had Roddies and I was interested in one of her pups. I thought I asked all the right questions. But I was young, and the idea of a big dog was appealing. When she told me she also bred Phyla, and that the Roddy litter was sold she offered to sell me a pup from her Phyllis. I had puppy fever and my old Roddy girl was in her teens and I feared losing her before I got another so I jumped on it. It was not pretty, it was not well thought out, and quite frankly there were a lot of lies on her part about the breed. So much of my first couple years was a lot of struggling. I have had Phyla almost 20 years now. And for as hard of a start as it was, I wouldn't give them up for the world. Question number two. For people not familiar with this breed, can you tell us a little bit about them? The good and the bad? There really is a huge variation in the breed due to the amount of backyard breeding. A lot of breeders are watering them down to a shell of what they once were. So much so that they should be classified as an entirely different breed. I am to have as true a phyla to the standard as I can find. Speaking of them, they are assholes. They are the true definition of two-faced. Most will be as sweet and gentle, laid back and soft as the sweetest golden, with you. But when dealing with someone they don't know you would think every story about the hounds of Hades must have been written about them. With their family their only goal in life is you. To be with you, next to you. They obsess about your body language and it becomes an unspoken dance of them trying to please you. Granted they are not smart in the aspects of a collie or shepherd. But they have a devotion like no other. They learn yorks before you give them, almost like they crawl in your head and set up residency. Their goal in life is to protect you. However you have to be willing to be the lead in this dance and give them something to do. If not they take matters into their own hands and can become pushy mouthy, and even aggressive. They want a strong leader like any big breed does. They need to be seen as partners in your everyday life, if they do not respect you they will make their own choices. The worst traits in Philo is what makes them what is most unique. Their indescribable hate of anyone they do not like. We are talking like high school teenage girl hate. They are certain in those moments as much as they love you, you're an idiot and their only job is to protect you as any obsessed stalker would. With as much force as needed, they will respond to a threat. They will not take no for an answer. And do not trust that your word no means jack squat in those moments. The issue becomes when you forget that your cute cuddly buddy who adores everything you do, and is perfect, wants to kill everyone that gets close and people let their guard down and people get hurt. There is a responsibility that comes with a breed many forget. Question number 3. What are some of the activities, do you do with your chosen breed? I am a bit out of sorts with the breed. I firmly believe although they have human aggression. They were bred to be a farm dog and should be eager to please. That means they should be able to do multiple things and do them well. They desire to make you happy as long as it doesn't involve being touched or people getting in their bubble. This doesn't mean smart. They are not collies and shepherds. They are not going to be snappy, show-offs, and flashy in an obedience ring. With my phyla I have done weight pool, very well as it is a passion of mine and have multiple international champions, droving as we work for a large cattle rancher in the spring and fall and help move livestock to and from pastures, barn hunt, this was fun till they learned they did not get to kill the rat, obedience, again not flashy or fast but got a title, rally, at their own pace, protection sports, bite the bad guy is always a favorite game, trick titles, you just have to make them think it was their idea to do this stupid thing, dry land racing. 3 to 5 feel as pulling a dry land cart which is similar to a sled pulled in the snow with wheels. But no snow because they are from Brazil and snow is stupid. I tried Bicajor, and learned one phyla is too much for one bike, no stop only go. I want to try dock diving, lure coursing and scent work but 2020 has slowed down our plans a little as we always are looking for new things to do. 
but sometimes it's simply sitting on the couch, going hiking, or just enjoying being there. Question number 4. If you are a braider who is your ideal customer and why? For example their lifestyle. What is the typical reason a customer buys a puppy from you? I am looking for people who are wanting the braid for the reason it was made. Ideally I look for families who want a great dog and also want to keep their families safe. Include the dog in their home, part of their group activities but are still smart enough to know that if little Mary has a party that Fido needs locked up. Allot of people I place dogs with are homesteaders and farmers. Looking for a dog to keep them safe and work with them. I would hope to place dogs into homes with people who can help them be what their instincts already have them wanting to be. Question number 5. What is your favorite breed that you've never owned or handled, but are interested in? Why? There are not a lot of breeds I have not had hands on. I am always partial to defensive breeds and breeds who can be versatile. Have trained correctly. They are very intelligent and bond with their handlers. Because why not? Question number six. Since we know health testing is important and is essential to a legitimate program, how is it importing dogs from a country like Brazil? Is health testing common in Brazil? Is breeding to a standard important to the Brazilian breeders? What are some of your experiences the good bad? As far as health testing feel as are about as ass backwards as any breed I have ever met. You have kennels who believe new colors are magic and appear from thin air, that are also the same super rare color that their dog who isn't a file is, magic or paper hang in your call. You have kennels who believe that health testing doesn't exist. That genetics tell you nothing and it's all a luck game. Due to this the breed is dying. It will not be long in the phyla as we know it will be gone. Crossed with dogs of other breeds and no one will know where it went. A few breeders health test. Most areas do not do ofa or penhip. So it's about how much you trust your vet to reads raise and how well you know bloodlines. The standard has changed repeatedly over the time it has been established by FCI. So much that the breed is now almost unrecognizable from what it was. However CAFIB is still trying to at least evaluate the dogs based on the old standard. Meaning both type and temperament. They have been able to keep a much truer type of phyla that is more inclined to be able to do what the dog was bred to do. Whereas FCI and CAFIB dogs almost look as different breeds. It really is about looking for breeders who are breeding for a more versatile working dog and actually doing it. There is so much crossbreeding and line that you have to trust your breeder and your knowledge to get a good phyla. Sadly I don't know if it will get better. Every year I watch the amount of purebred dogs who can do their job, pass a temperament test and still resemble a phyla from the original get smaller and smaller. Someday I fear there will be so few we will be bred into a corner. I am now seeing diseases in the breed becoming common that never existed before. They were common in the breeds people are mixing in, and lying about. Must be one of those magic things. I feel like phyla are part of a world that is fading away. True phyla don't fit well in modern metropolitan areas. It's a breed for a very small population of people. I fear the world one day will pass them by, and they will disappear like other breeds who were simply forgotten. They may still be here in name. But they will be no more phyla than the Great Dane is a savage boar hunter, or Bull Mastiff is a night watchman's guard. Or even the English Mastiff who once was a noble dog of war who faced men with weapons and shields to defend his home and land, and now is so heavy that a simple run around the ring is exhausting and so timid and fearful many flee from any loud noise or conflict. These breeds like the phyla will be bastardized into non-existence. Because people will put greed and ignorance before accepting that they were perfect the way they were. I learned the fortune and our gods of mighty Thor and mortal wars, and of the life which heroes lead before they reach Valhalla. Nature's laws I learned to see. 
mirrored in mythology Family fought the will to be Now stood my racial soul Younger days, 